regulate the investments that, that they make. Now, changes are coming into force dealing with ownership transparency, and this is something that does set British Columbia apart from other jurisdictions, but I think that is something that is going to come to the forefront generally. Um, so, so with that in mind, uh, I'm open to take any questions that, that may have arisen. All right, so the first question is, who is considered a significant individual for the purpose of the Corporate Transparency Registry? registry? Yes, uh, thank you for that question. Um, so the, there's no definitive set answer. Um, the two corporate records uh, that provide the most relevant information for determining who a significant individual is for a company is the company's central securities register and the articles of the company, the foundational document. Um, the act, the legislation sets out the rules for who is defined as a significant individual. And this individual will be significant if they have a significant number of shares or a right to replace a majority of the directors. So this will really be determined by the number of shareholders, their rights in the company. Um, and so there's no, no set number um, per se, it will really depend on the corporate structure of that company. Thank you, uh, Kia, for, for the answer. Um, another question I see is, are there any tax implications of buying property in Vancouver as an investment? And just if I may add from my point of view, the question coming from the United States, where we see that tax rules are different from state to state, Maybe you can help us to understand how British Columbia may have a special impact on that as well. But the real question is, are there any tax implications on buying property in Vancouver? Well, there, there are, and, and it, it arose as a political reaction to um, foreign investment that was, dry, that, that was seen or perceived to be driving up home uh, prices in, in British Columbia, uh, especially in the lower mainland. And so, Two measures have been brought into effect dealing with Vancouver in particular. There's an empty homes tax, um, where if uh, foreign investors buy homes in British Columbia or strata condos um, that aren't occupied, they will be subject to a 1% uh, empty home tax, and that's 1% of the assessed, assessed taxable value of the property. Um, that doesn't apply um, to homes that are rented out um, for at least six months a year. Um, but it does require investors to sign a declaration and to monitor how they, they uh, file each and every, every year. There's also additional property transfer tax, which is a 20% tax that's added uh, to non-residents who purchase um, homes in, in, in Metro Vancouver. Um, so that can be a, a, an onerous obligation. It doesn't apply to permanent residents, so, so that is one way to over, overcome that. Um, but it is uh, specific to, to, to the Lower Mainland, and it is a reaction to ascending property values within Vancouver and, and the Greater Vancouver area. Um, so, and it's a reaction to just the, the uh, incredible growth in the home valuations. And you'll see other hot markets will have brought in similar measures, such as in, in Toronto. Um, it won't apply to areas where the price increase hasn't been as significant as it has been for mainland. Thank you for answering with regard to the price. And I hear a story of an empty building tax. Is there any other tax implication if you want to see Vancouver properties as an investment? Uh, in terms of taxation, in right. terms of, there will be the, the normal tax levels that apply to, to everyone. So you'll still be assessed property taxes, you'll still be assessed your capital gains unless you've got a principal residence uh, exemption to rely upon. Um, there's some discussion about whether or not the principal residence, the capital gains exemption will survive or not, given, um, given the, the, the deficits encountered by the COVID pandemic. Um, so, but other than those two specific taxes, um, all the other ones are, are common to, to all Canadian homeowners and all, all Canadian residents. The next question I see is, 
what is one way a shareholder agreement can be structured in Canada to help with wealth preservation? We thank you for the question. We we see that in, in the case of foreign uh, foreign nationals who are transferring uh, their or a portion of their wealth over to, to Canada and who wish to control the assets um, that they they. They, they acquire so they can do that through through trust um, another way would be to to incorporate and, and you can have a multi-class shareholder structure um, where you have rights and restrictions to attach to each separate share class and to define expectations going forward what you would do would be to draft a shareholders agreement that sets out the expectations that, that each shareholder can reasonably have it's, it's an agreement that would be entered into with all the shareholders of the company and would manage the company's affairs going forward. Um, so what you would do is that you would stipulate which shares have which ownership uh, voting rights, for example, which have uh, redemption rights or, or which have greater rights on, on liquidation. Um, by controlling how shares may be voted, you can... Um, restrict who can operate the business. And, and, and that's one way of, of, uh, of dealing with the issue. Thank you, Julian, for, for clarifying that. And I would you know just from, a, from another question I see here, I realize that business climate differs from Canadian provinces. Can you explain the legal background differentiating the, prom the provinces? So Canada is a federal a federal system, and, and it, it's a bit of a historical anomaly in the sense that, that I, I think the original Canadian Constitution was drafted with a view of what had happened in America after the Civil War. So there there is a federal uh, regime that, that operates uh, in a complementary manner with, with provincial jurisdiction. Provinces have jurisdiction over some matters, whereas the feds have, have a jurisdiction over others. Um, you will see a federal tax system that's imposed upon all the provinces, except there is independent variety for each province to impose their own. The feds provide tax points to, to each um, uh, province, which, will, which allows each province to tailor their own tax regimes to make one more attractive than the other. And, and you will see that on a province by province basis. Um, there are, in addition to differing tax codes, there are certain uh, differences that, that each Canadian province will have. There are ling linguistic differences for, uh, and legal s differences in the legal system when one looks at Quebec as opposed to the rest of, of Canada. Um, but you will see that, that um, on, on a provincial basis, there is a fair degree of flexibility um, that each province uses to attract investment to their particular jurisdiction. Great. And be expressed through tax credits and other provincial programs. Perfect, Julian. Thank you, Kia. Thank you, Julian.